Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number 5 of the UBL and we're here up against Aaron. He's taking over a team for Merald and uh, it's going to be super duper scary. So this is a really not ideal matchup for me because I'll be honest, I feel kind of naked here in this matchup without being able to bring my Cinderace here, but with potentially Flash Fire uh, Chandelure and a Mantine that's going to be designed to take on Dracovish. So it's going to be super defensive. I could tell that straight away from the matchup that Cinderace is not going to have the best time. And honestly, I probably should have brought it regardless. But yeah, like I said, I just feel kind of naked without Cinderace. It's been a security blanket like it for this entire season and it's um put in a lot of work for me i really enjoyed using cinderace quite a bit uh with its speed and how hard it hits but here we are without it i felt like i had to bring a so volley ground here because my answers to heliolisk are really not ideal here uh i really wish i did have more special defense on my team just in general but i think i can manage it decently well he did have a gigalith sand core available to him but i guess he didn't want to bring it for um because of a handful of different things that i could do in particular um my rotom mo can kind of sit in front of it but but hopefully that's going to be able to deal with his more uh, physically or oriented threats and um again my Sovali ground is specially defensive for uh the handful of special threats he has but namely the heliolisk and hopefully i have enough offense with again a scarf togekiss and a scarf dracovish that i can kind of manage the rest of his team decently well i do obviously have to play around the mantine and have to play around uh a handful of other threats but that's going to be the matchup here. I don't feel like it's a great matchup for me, but uh, we match up interestingly well. I think we both match up decently well against each other, but it's obviously going to come down to how, what kind of prep we eat, we bring and um, whom we choose to leave on the bench. But with that, we're just going to get straight into the match. Okay, so here we are going straight into the match. Um, leading here was really difficult i mean leading for me in general has always been pretty difficult but here he decides to lead off with the hydreigon and i believe i want to say that i lead off with the duraludon i do and this is very much not ideal i do have a little bit of special defense investment so i should by every indication be able to take one single solitary draco meteor um depending on on this thing set but uh it's not something that i really want to do but i don't really want to switch out here I, I do have the toy kiss available to me, but it, it feels kind of dubious in this moment where um, he does have U-turn available to him, and he does just kind of have uh, a bunch of different opportunities, uh, uh, options available to him. But he ends up missing the, the Draco Meteor, and I get a clean half off with a life-orbed uh, Flash Cannon. So, I obviously feel that I have to switch out. Uh, I think that there's a decent chance that this thing is, is um, choice in some way. So, I... I try to take advantage of this Draco miss as much as possible by just going out into my Togekiss, which honestly, I probably should have done from the beginning, but um, like I said, it just felt like there were too many options there available to him, so I do end up going into the Togekiss, and I felt confident enough that I can take one single hit, and I felt like this was an important moment to try to get damage off on this Exeggutor for the remainder of the game, but it probably would have been more optimal to try to... Uh, go into Rotomo in this moment. But regardless, um, I do think about this for, for for a second here, but I ultimately ended up trying to get the damage off on this thing, uh, especially because just the makeup of the, makeup of the team means that Togekiss isn't going to do a whole heck of a lot without um, this thing out of the way either way, but I do get the critical hit, which does mean that I can straight up Oko this Excadrill. So, Again, my thinking there was just that uh, HP on my Togekiss isn't the most important, especially if I can keep rocks off on my side of the field. And just being able to kind of mitigate this threat early on is going to allow me to click Air Slash very freely in the later game. And it, it's going to be 2 KO naturally. So I felt confident enough that I could take one single hit and then be able to take it from there. But uh, it was all moot because I ended up getting a Scarf to uh, crit without even a uh, super luck or scope lens uh, But here obviously I have to switch out I end up going into uh, my Dracovish Which uh, should be a decent enough switch in I, I really am thinking about this quite a bit because I don't want to take a really strong shadow ball um, But again, it's another situation where I don't think HP on my Dracovish matters a whole heck of a lot it does go for the sunny day though, which is an interesting play, but in my head um, He 
it, it doesn't, it's not the biggest deal in the world because Vicious Rend is always going to be dubious for me this early in the game with the Mantine just chilling in the background. So for me in this moment, I'm thinking that I can just get a crunch off. If he does want to stay, he, he, he might be confident enough with the sunny day up that he wants to stay in here. He can be Pasho buried, right, to, to, to try to um, mitigate me with, with sunny day plus the Pasho. But uh, crunch is always going to be my, my workaround here. And we do just pick up a straight Oko on this crunch. I believe I ran Calx right before this, which is why I, I took a second to think about it. But um, I believe crunch was a minor roll here. I, I believe it was a roll um, decently strongly in my favor. But um, but there was a chance that it was going to be able to take the crunch, especially uh, how it was built. I don't think Shandalorn needs a whole ton of speed in this matchup in general. But regardless, now this thing comes in and I'm mildly terrified and... I'm not proud of how I play uh, with in the face of this Heliolisk, especially since I am up with a lead here. But I think that uh, that in my head allowed me to play this a little bit more recklessly. So I do go into the Silvali, which I I really did think that I, that I was going to force this thing to to want to go for an uh, an electric move. I can eat up the electric move and try to parting shot out to try to give myself a, a favorable matchup but he called that perfectly even though I, I i don't believe i had a ground type on my on my roster i think he smelled from the very beginning from team preview that i would have to be silvali ground for the matchup and he knew uh what i would try to do in this moment even though i don't think it's been revealed and i don't think i had any way of knowing that i would have silvali ground until this moment um Aaron's just a very good player. He knew uh, exactly what I was trying to do in that moment. It was a straight to a KO, and I am wearing this thing down a little bit due to solar power and life orb. But I don't have any solid answers to this thing. Um, Silvali was my best straight up answer to this thing, and it's not there anymore. It's just not. It, um, I, I don't really have a lot of special defense on my team, just in general. So I try to have to figure out something here. My, I'm. As you can see, I'm thinking my best play might just be to um, go into my my Rotom here. And ultimately, I, I believe that's what I end up doing. And I, yeah, I, I was running out of time trying to think about what I want to do because I really do not have good answers to this thing. But my thinking here, right, is it's wearing itself down to Solar Power and Life Orb. I think what I can do is I can take a hit. I can Volt Switch, and then that would put it in range of another Life Orb plus Solar uh, solar Power round, and that could take it out, but uh, Volt, Volt Switch did m a significantly less damage than I would have expected, and not only that, but I believe Sun ends on this turn, so he gets the benefits of Solar Power for this turn, but doesn't have to take the penalty because uh, by, the, by the time this turn ends, solar, um, the Sun has gone away. And again, it's just super frustrating because I really did think that I really did think that my Rotom was going to be able to do more damage there, and I would have been able to um, preserve HP on on some other mons. But as soon as I went into my Togekiss, obviously that would have been the better play. I thought that I would have um, put myself in a bad position by by maybe making them think that I'd be forced into into Aura Sphere because. Because Air Slash might not have done enough damage, especially if this thing is, uh, had had a little bit of bulk investment. I felt like I was I was in a tough spot in that situation, but regardless, I don't think I played that turn uh, optimally. I think if I had just gone into Togekiss and clicked Dazzling Gleam, uh, that would have put me in the in the best position possible. But ultimately, I don't think uh, I I don't, I don't think Rotom was in any position to do much of anything for the for the rest of this matchup. So. I don't think it ended up mattering too too much, but it was just frustrating in the in the moment that I did have a, a much better play available to me and I didn't take it. Now, here uh, comes in the Sylveon, and I go into kind of a dedicated answer in in my Drapion, but he goes for the Sing and he lands it, which is bananas to me. Um, but spoiler alert, I mean, uh, uh, th this thing is actually Sing Blunder Policy, which I don't think ever pops during the match, but. Uh, it, it honestly meant that this thing was, uh, regardless of whether or not it hit this thing, it would have put itself in a very good position to kind of take out my Drapion no matter what happened. But, uh, again, landing this thing is absolutely bananas to me. Regardless, I'm in a not great position. I'm just trying to wake up. I'm trying to get some damage on this thing. 
and he goes for combine which is big for me right so he's already re revealed three moves with the moon blast with the uh sing and the calm mind so my thinking here is first of all uh letting my drake band go down was a bit of a mistake because now i'm not, I'm not able to mess around with any sleep pause stuff what i should have done was probably sack off my rotom wash but honestly in this moment i was uh, I was kind of fearing the the Mantine, and and I was scared of an end game in which I would not be able to uh, take out this Mantine. Um, but ultimately, that was such a silly thing for me to think in my head because uh, my my Duraludon has had, had Thunderbolt. I could have managed the threat somewhat well here, but um, because I do have a pretty slow Duraludon, again, um, I do have a little bit of special defense investment. Um, again, enough that I was able to take a, a, a single Draco Meteor from that from that High Dragon. But because I am so slow, it, it means that this uh, reasonably fast Sylveon, I, again, I did not see a fast Sylveon coming in this matchup. But because it's so reasonably fast, uh, it means that it can sing and it's going to land another sing. So again, Blunder Policy is not popping for him. And again... This is a moment I should. Okay, so first of all, I, I brought in the Dracovish because I was thinking. I, th I was thinking to myself, he might get greedy here and go for another Calm Mind, which, it, again, in in retrospect, was never a play that I think he was in a position to make. But what I should have done was just go into Rotom here. I like Rotom has no use other than the Mantine, but even then, I don't. I had answers to the Mantine. I was so scared of this dang Mantine. Um, and potentially like toxic root stalling my entire team, but it in, in 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 retrospect, I should not have been that scared of the dang Mantine. I should have just um, sacked off Rotom, then gone into Dracovish, and then if the Mantine wants to come in, then it's gonna come in no matter what happens. And I try to manage it from there, but especially in that moment where I let the my Duraludon go to sleep, I kind of panicked a little bit, and because of that panic, I. I uh, sacked off him on that I really didn't have to, but regardless, uh, he gets a Moonblast special defense, special attack drop on my, on my Togekiss, which then forces me to go into Rotom and sack it off. But here I'm just playing for some flinches. Um, I just need about two flinches in order to make this work, and I actually got a flinch a couple turns ago, so I'm in an okay position here. I and I need maybe one or two more, and or a crit and. Well, definitely and a crit, but uh, my only counterplay to this dang Sylveon is just to try to air slash this thing, and I do get a crit, and I honestly thought that I was going to get a crit flinch here. I do not get the crit flinch, and I ultimately don't have any answers left to this Sylveon. The Sylveon is faster than my uh, Duraludon because of the um, mildly silly Dur uh, Duraludon set that I brought, and uh, yeah, it, I mean... It, it's funny because this matchup probably would have gone worse for me if it did miss a thing and it activated the the blunder policy. I think the only reason that I had an, that I had uh, an opportunity in this late game was because it kept landing its sings and it and it never got uh, plus two speed. But uh, the fact that things were were being put to sleep and my options were being limited honestly caused me to panic in this end game and it caused me to to, to not really play optimally the way that I should have played. And Sylveon just beat me in, in the end. Uh, it was a really frustrating way to lose. I obviously was not um, recording this live, but when my Togekiss got the crit but not the flinch, I screamed a, a, a word in my room that I should not be screaming. But um, but yeah, it was, it was a frustrating way to lose. I absolutely think Aaron outprepped me with a really, really great Sylveon set. He absolutely um outplayed me and i and i just to, to some extent i definitely outplayed myself i think like i said just it, landing those things just just kind of flustered me in a way that i really uh was not expecting to and i and looking back on it i really don't like the way that i played that end game at all but uh that's gonna be that's gonna be how week five ends i wish i'd brought better sets but uh Again, part of it was just feeling naked without Cinderace, right? With the Manti in there and with the Chandelure there. Uh, I really didn't feel comfortable bringing my Cinderace and things like that. Forcing me to build in a way that I really um, didn't feel the most comfortable. I think just kind of put me in a position where I kind of panicked in, in, in the end game where if I did have a 
if I did have a bandit sentries in that end game instead of a dang Drapion that didn't do anything, it would have been a really, really interesting end game that uh, would have been a lot of fun. But that's going to be, uh, again, how it ends. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UBL. We'll be closing out the UBL season strong. We'll be coming out with more weeks of the AP Academy. And we took over a team in the NCP Nimbus uh, Wi-Fi division. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, we've already played week one against uh, Dietite, uh, a very good friend of mine. And it's going to be a, a very, very fun season. So with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be once again out.